Hello everyone, I'm back with some more important MCQs along with explanations that will help you in your competitive and academic exams. So let's start the video. Okay, so this is our first question. Drug resistance is seen with which of the following sexual transmitted diseases? And these are the options. Number one, syphilis, gonorrhea, chancroid, or donovanosis. So let's discuss the question. You should know that Nizeria gonorrhea is responsible for gonorrhea disease and it is resistant to almost all antibiotics. It develops resistance through two main mechanisms. Number one, plasmid mediated resistance. In this case, resistance genes are transmitted from other bacteria. For example, resistance to penicillin. Second, chromosomally mediated resistance. In this case, mutations in its own DNA lead to resistance against fluoroquinolones and cephalosporin. So the correct answer here is gonorrhea. Now let's analyze the other options. Syphilis. For syphilis, penicillin is the drug of choice. And second, chancroids, they are susceptible to azithromycin, erythromycin, donovanosis, they are susceptible to doxycycline and azithromycin. Our next question, out of the given lab techniques, which of the following can be used for the sterilization of disposable pipette tips? And these are the options, hot air one, microwaving, 70% ethyl alcohol and autoclaving. So let's analyze the options one by one. Number one, hot air oven. This method uses dry heat, which is too high for plastic. So this is not a suitable method. Second, microwaving. Microwave heating can be uneven and it is not suitable for sterilization method. So this option is incorrect. Third, 70% ethyl alcohol. Alcohol acts as a disinfectant, but it does not eliminate the spores, making it insufficient for complete sterilization. So again, this is not a correct answer. Last, autoclaving. Most of the disposable pipettes are made up of polypropylene, which can withstand autoclaving at 121 degrees centigrade. So autoclaving is the correct method for sterilization. Our next question, which of the following is primarily a waterborne infection? Our options are HBV, HCV, HDV, and HAV. So we all know that we have five types of hepatitis viruses, HAV, HBV, HCV, HDV, and HEV. Out of these, two are waterborne, HAV and HEV. So an easy way to remember this is AE, AE are vowels and vowels come from the bowels. So HAV is the correct answer. HAV and HEV, they are spread through fecal-oral route via contaminated water and food. Rest BCD, they are blood-borne, transmitted through blood, sexual contact or from mother to child. All right, our last question. Diagnosis of rotaviral infection is most commonly done by antigen detection in blood, antibody detection in serum, light microscopy of stool specimen, and antigen detection in stool. So this rotavirus infection is a leading cause of severe gastroenteritis in infants and young children. So now let's analyze the options one by one. Option one, antigen detection in blood. This is incorrect because rotavirus infect the intestine and it is shed in stool, not detected in blood. Okay, so next option, antibody detection in serum. Again, this is not useful for active diagnosis. Um, patient may have antibodies due to previous exposure. So again, this is incorrect. Third, light microscopy of stool specimen. This is again incorrect because light microscopy cannot detect rotavirus as it requires electron microscopy for visualization. 
लास्ट एंटीजन डिटेक्शन इन स्टूल एंड दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर रोटा वायरस एंटीजन डिटेक्शन इज डन यूजिंग अलाइजा लेटेक्स एग्लूटिनेशन एंड इम्यूनोक्रोमेटोग्राफी सो द बेस्ट डायग्नोस्टिक मैथड इज एंटीजन डिटेक्शन इन स्टूल All right that's all for this video if you found it helpful don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends thanks for watching see you in the next video